in three, two, one. All right, you guys, good morning. It's already 10 o'clock, and just for the record, I am moving very slow today. As you can see, we're having a beautiful day here at JT Livestock. It has just been super nice. We have a call the colonel here behind the barn, and man, it's been, it's already been a, oh, the dogs are playing in the, oh my gosh, so Bear got in the water tank, Jay, Bear got in the water tank and jumped out and Snickers tried to get in and he stuck like over the, he just fell in, he got, he got it, he was like trying to get in and had like one leg, look, he's laying in the water tank. Yeah, Bear jumped right in. Snickers did not jump in nearly as agile. Look, look, look. See when he gets out. Let's watch him. Getting in was, was not as easy as it looked. Come on, sir. Can you get out? He's got some bad hips. Oh, just, well, it was, oh, oh, he did it. Good job. Yeah, Bear jumped right in there. And I'm telling you, he jumped in and hung, you know, right at the, and he just kind of had that look on his face like, I am hung. Yes. Oh, silly dogs. So, all right, you guys. Well, we have Donnie, lot number 511 from the Billings, Montana, February 2022 sale. Brought to you by Gary. <laughs> this poor horse, that'll forever be his name. The whole thing. This is Donnie, lot number 511 from the February Billings, Montana sale. And then we have a little Frenchman's guy, um, Gelding. He is, uh, I believe, a Frenchman's Bogey, bogey maybe I don't know he's kind of got some funky front feet some cracks that we're gonna have to line out he's new tell him I'm new his name's Edmund I believe Jacob bought him in Louisiana and his front feet we put him on hoof rx so I'll explain that to you guys here in just a minute and show you that product because this horse right here is going to just be such a good testament um, for that product we have Pepper, who is consigned to the April, pr April premiere cell, and he is ready to get out and play this morning and get out of, he said, get me out of my jammies, get me out of my jammies. Um, let's see, we have, oh, we have Yeti. Hi, Yeti, sir. Um, <clears throat> then we have Cactus, who Cactus did not rip his jammies. Unfortunately, they got hung in the door. Somebody put them in the door and then slid the door all the way shut and, Ripped his jammies, poor cactus. We have two crows. Hi, two crows. And we have Mr. Goose here this morning. This is my little, my little draft pony. I know, is he? He really is cute, though, isn't he? I worm the absolute shit out of him, and all that hair's coming off. So, yeah, yeah, he's got a lot of bone and foot for a pony. You know, he's. But he's got some percher on in him, and it shows in his head. And I'm very not. Oh, I'm just. You're you're bad. That's effort. We have Peyton in his green frog jammies. Peyton is looking for a princess to kiss him because he said he's a frog. I think Peyton. That's the perfect thing. Peyton said he's a frog, and you can give him kisses, and he'll turn into a prince. Oh, Peyton. Peyton is honestly the best boy. He is the best, most solid trail ride on the entire property. Peyton is the kind of horse that if you told me, pick a horse in the barn that you think the most novice rider can go down the trail and follow everybody and be in no danger, I would pick Peyton. We have Beav. Beaver is super nice. He's going to be one of our May consignments. Lena will also be a May consignment. Lena, what happened... It's getting worse, buddy. We're going to have to put your jammies back together. And then we have my sweet boy, Javi. Hi, Javi. Are you unzipped? Javi is still learning. Javi's been here, but he still does not think people or dogs are good. Huh, tell him I still don't think people or dogs are that good. Nope. And Miss Pretty Girl. Hi, Pretty. Hi, Miss Pretty Girl. Pretty is actually... um really cool she is a suffolk punch um on one side her and peyton share the same sire but they have different dams pretty's dam is actually an appaloosa like um like a spotted mare and she has all the appaloosa traits from malted skin to stripe she's got the striped feet the black and white striped feet they're gorgeous 
and Javi is trying to get naked. He has unzipped himself. I just, he's really getting better about people. You want to shake my hand, sir? Good job, buddy. Good job, buddy. He was very, I'm telling you, you could walk down this shed row and he would wheel around and stand at the back of the stall. So afraid. So we're getting there. We're getting better. Every single day we're getting better. Huh, Javi? The fact that Javi will just stand up here and let us see him is enough for me. Um, so we have Lena Beaver, Miss Pretty Girl. But yeah, the pony here, he is super, super, super nice and just going to probably be the coolest pony in the world. I actually was going to buy him just to resell him fast, and I ended up liking him enough, and he's really sound and young. He's just a six-year-old, and I thought, you know what? With a little bit of time, this pony can look better, and he was loving that, but it does look like it snowed in here suddenly, doesn't it? A little snowstorm. A little snowstorm. All right, you guys, we're having a star party, so it looks like we have about 600 stars. Oh, 750. All right, you guys, let's get to 2,500 stars and get this star party um, cooking. But yeah, it does look like a snowstorm suddenly. My shed row went from being pretty clean to... What happened? <laughs> goose happened. It's a goose storm. Yeah, it's a goose storm. We could definitely have like a... a we could make a down comforter out of, his, out of his hair. All right, you guys, we are at 750 stars. So please send some stars. Um, those stars kind of go towards um, the upkeep of the unsold horses here. So it's a great thing. Um, Tammy, my leopard saddle pad is a Pro Ortho Equine, and it is um, one of their Lovendal pads. Um, we also have a purple and leopard and a red and leopard, and they are their H70, and the Pro Ortho Equine saddle pads are absolutely amazing, you guys. They are truly, truly amazing. So, yeah, Jerry's fixing to be here a little bit. They had a little emergency and had to take their cat to the vet, so he's um, about 30 minutes out and he's going to get all the stalls cleaned and get all the outside horses fed and watered. We're just having a really slow day. Tylen is um, at a, I went ahead and allowed him to take one of my tickets. When you buy a PEMF complete machine, you get a training course plus a couple for your family or whatever, you know, like if you have an assistant or a child or somebody that wants to learn. So anyway, I already took my class last year and Tylen has really been using the PEMF machine a lot on horses. So I um, got with Miss Kathy and Tylen is at the PEMF complete training in-person demo today. It's a $500 class and um, because I bought a machine, he was, he got to go and take up one of the spots that came with my machine, which was really great. So we are very, very excited for Thailand to get to do that. Um, what we're going to do next is, um, what we're going to do next is probably see about him and I taking some osteopath courses. They have some equine osteopath um, courses across the United States where you can go and, and learn from a veterinarian who teaches um, osteopath and we're we've been discussing that as well because everything we can do to improve these horses is just one thing that's going to help improve their life and hopefully they'll never land in a kill pen again okay it just said star party complete thank you guys so much we have 2950 stars that makes me very excited so and uh, the girls don't work on the weekends but we all do so Jay, he's kind of man in the fort. He's going to do some exercising of the horses and we'll get, I'll probably clean some of the stalls until, um, um, Jerry called and he's like 30 minutes. They got the, it was a cat, not a pig. Uh, uh, I mean a cat, not a calf. I thought he said on the phone, they had a calf and I thought it was a cat. That makes more sense. I was wondering why Lacey was being so dramatic over a calf, but I mean, <laughs> I mean, some people really like their livestock, I guess. I mean, but anyway, it was a cat, not a calf. I just was half asleep in pre-migraine. You guys, I'm literally, this is what I look like today. Because I, just so we have a visual, because I literally have a migraine. I took a naproxen. I took a naproxen when I woke up. And, uh. I swear to God, we are so hard on pitchforks. Do you guys ever feel that way? Like, who else cleans stalls and gets so tired of, like, 
Missing teeth. Missing teeth. So we'll just sit you guys up in here with me. If y'all wanna just hang out for a minute, I'm gonna clean a little stall. Y'all can just hang out. I'm gonna clean Goose's stall. Because Goose is actually a really, that pony has the best stall manners of any horse I've ever had. So one thing I can tell you guys is that we have rubber mats in all the stalls, which are so nice, but it's also such a pain in the butt sometimes. Because like this pony has got his rubber mat all jacked up. So what I teach my staff when we, um, in the mornings when we clean the stalls, and this is something I was kind of telling my intern, um, when we start to clean stalls, one thing we do is we remove the little feed buckets. That way, if they still have feed from breakfast, we just take that away. I don't allow the feed to sit in the stall all day long. We take this away when they get out of the stall. Obviously, he's got a great appetite. But if they've left some feed, what we do is we go ahead and give an extra dose of gut check. So if they're leaving feed, we wanna assess why. Um, so like if he got goose out and let's say he had left half of his feed, he's had ample time to eat breakfast, so what's going on with him? What we do is we give gut check, um, 20 full cc's, and then when we feed dinner tonight, if that horse still doesn't go straight to their grain and clean it up, it makes me feel like it's not ulcers at that point. There's something else going on. Are they getting a little seasonal allergy? They don't feel good. Um, you know, you wanna make sure they're pooping good, drinking good at that point. Another thing, if they're leaving feed, we really focus back on their teeth. Have they had um, their teeth floated lately and maybe we accidentally have a little sore tooth or if they haven't had their teeth floated lately, oh God. If they haven't had their teeth floated lately, um, maybe that needs to be done. So we really try to focus every day on the feed. A lot of people dump feed, go to work, things like that. And for me, the racehorse trainer in me just can't do that. So what I do is um, I just make sure that every morning when we get them out, the first thing we do that's most important is did that horse clean their grain up? Doing your job down here, Jerry. I'm coming. It's all right. I'm fine. I'm going to take it out of your check, though. But listen, I'm a high-end stall cleaner. I charge 100 bucks a stall. Okay. Just kidding. <laughs> okay, no worries. I don't want your menudo, but thank you. Hey, will you do me a favor when you come back? Will you look down there and see, there should be on that shelf, look and see if there's any peroxide. Any yeah, just when you put that in the fridge, you know that shelf that's got stuff? If you see a peroxide, bring it. If you don't see it, it's no problem. I'll grab some when I go. Peroxide? Oh, a cross tie, no peroxide. Get the piece spot out. My pony keeps such a clean saw. I love it. My friggin', this is what I get for wearing sandals to the barn. Cause I was like, I have a migraine. I'm not gonna do nothing. I'm wearing sandals. I've got so much stuff in my sandals. me to have Jerry I need to have this one mat in here moved and I'm not strong enough to do it alone okay. just don't let me forget to ask him to do it it's what I'm oh. will you dump this outside what's the, uh, what's the the what, well, what pack, well, the pack live, oh, I'm on JT I'm on JT livestock okay. yeah JT livestock I got a friend asking. yeah no worries Okay, so once we make sure that he finished breakfast, clean the stall, got the pee spot out, Jerry's gonna have to help me move a mat because he's got one mat. 
no good. We always make sure. Now, this morning when Tylen fed breakfast, he um, he told me I went ahead and filled the hay bags because I felt bad. I wasn't going to be there. I woke up extra early. I fed everybody and <clears throat> I filled the hay bags. Normally, right now, we would fill the hay bag. So when he came back, he had a full one. Tylen's already done that. Another thing that we're really big on is making sure that the water buckets get dumped every day. We don't we don't let those go. We just don't let those go. That's an everyday thing. Um, and that's just routine. So I've had a lot of people ask me that they've had outside horses, things like that. Like what our routine is because we do have a lot of horses and it just makes, I wouldn't wear a Maggie. Even if I had muck boots here, I can tell you that I'm, these are waterproof Steve Maddens and I will just squirt them with the hose and keep moving. I wouldn't wear them. Look how much, I mean, I might as well be barefoot. He can help me. I, what I need for him to do is to hold it up while I just pull the shavings out from underneath it. And he can help me. Go get on the horse. Okay. You're riding. You he said, doesn't ride. I said, don't let me forget. With me having a headache, I will forget. And then tomorrow it'll be ass backwards and really fucked up and I'll be pissed off. So we might as well get it done today. Um, <clears throat> okay, so um, about this much, like two or three squirts in every water. Okay. Um, I already dumped this water bucket, but I just, with season, I have a couple of coughs. I think they're just seasonal, but I'm not okay with it. Mm -hmm. We want to just really, really keep our eyes peeled in here for any, um, like the nasal discharge. But I mean, just about that much in every one. If you need another one, you know, just... A generous amount that water bucket's pretty stained i scrubbed it but let's just make sure we put peroxide in every water today okay. so dump the water bucket put peroxide in it and then fill it up and everybody nobody has a snot nose so i think that the coughs if you want to tie her um, on the walker and take this horse's jammies off and tie him on the walker you can get these two stalls um make sure we take their feed tubs out i noticed day before yesterday I don't know if it was you or Tori. It doesn't matter. But one person that cleaned stalls didn't take the feed tubs out. I just don't want to leave the feed. So let's say they have a little feed left. Let's not leave it. No, I never took Okay. That's no problem. I knew half of them were out and half of them were in. So I knew. I was like, one person missed the memo. All right, you guys. I have a migraine. So I'm fixing to put my sunglasses back on. And I took naproxen as soon as I woke up. And it didn't fucking help. So... I'm just going to be over here dying, and um, thank you. Just remember on the green frog, um, let whenever it comes time for the one in the green, let Jay do him, please. Thank you. All right, sir. Hey, he's a prince. I'm telling you guys. Peyton, yeah, Peyton said, Peyton, we're just going to ride him easy and just kind of, uh, yeah, whenever he goes to get out. Um, I'm, Peyton said he's a prince. He's a frog prince. He's not a toad. You're a toad. <laughs> he is a big fucking horse, isn't he? Peyton said he only weighed 1370. That's not big. That is just hefty. That's big bone. That's big everything. That's big organs, big feet. This horse has all the... Peyton is a good horse, but this horse has all the bone. This horse has as much bone as any horse in this body barn, including Peyton, and he's a pony. But but listen, he's um got the little percher on head. I've never seen a percher on head quite like, but th that's a pony percher on. But at least the regular size horse fits. Ah, his mane is beautiful. His tail, I'm telling y'all, his tail. Oh, let me see what happened. Oh, yeah, that was yesterday. That was a whole... Yes, this was a... You were here for this. You were just busy. Go on, pretty girl. Um, If you can... Sn uh, I think we... If you want to snap her to the black one... I'll jog them. What are you doing, good-looking, sir? All right, you guys... I am finally 
Um, the Botox worked for my migraines wonderful. I will tell you guys, I used to have migraines almost every day. I don't know what happened after we moved here. I don't know if it was my staff <laughs> or if it was just the stress of trying to learn how to run a big business. But I was getting migraines two to three days a week and I had Botox done for my migraines. That's when I had the lip flip done. That was hilarious. My husband thought I got lip fillers. I went in and we had a couple of units of Botox left after they did my neck. And I let them just do a little lip flip and right here. And oh my God, my husband was so fucking mad. My lips were this big and it only lasted. I mean, that, that lip flip isn't a permanent thing. It only lasts like 10 days. Maybe it lasted maybe two weeks. I wouldn't pay for that because it did not last very much at all. I mean, I guess if you wanted to go once a month and get it done, but I'm going to tell y'all, um, I had that lip flip done and my husband was just mortified. My lips are very okay sized. They were this big and he was like, you got lip fillers. And I was like, I got Botox. And he was like, Botox doesn't go in your lip. I Googled it. And then I had to tell him I got a lip flip. All right, dogs. I really like y'all, but I can't go y'all sitting on me. Listen, I thought Bear was big, and he came out there and tried to sit on me. Snickers was right behind him, and then I remembered what big was. Yeah. Who looks like a fish? A calf. Oh, the it was a calf. I thought you said calf last night, but then this morning I thought you said cat. It's Lacey. Don't ask questions. Do you want to explain Lacey to him or you want me to explain Lacey to him? Fuck no, it's a backyard goddamn pet that she rushed to the fucking vet. I told you, I, surely he meant cat because who on God's green earth would spend all that money on a calf? A little bitty calf, deformed calf. A little bitty deformed calf and she's, hang on one second, let's get his jammies off of him. Looks like a, Hang on, just so just he's off. He just, he wants to love people. He really does. He just really doesn't. <laughs> yeah, he really doesn't. No, he really doesn't. He really thinks people are going to beat the shit out of him. And it's just going to take a minute. I mean, you know what I love about this horse? Is that I know somebody's been god awful bad to him. This is Javi, Javier. Somebody has been as sorry to this horse as any motherfucker could be. And you know what I love about him the most? There's not a counterfeit bone in his body. He would not buck you off. He will not hurt you. He doesn't want any harm. But th there's something to be said for a horse who's been mistreated and still won't hurt you. You know what I mean? St he won't. He'll just take it. Yep, he has had the shit beat out of him. And I'm telling you, he will not fight back. He will take it. He's scared. We had Miss Kathy work on him. Nope, let's leave it on there till it comes off on its own accord. Almost yep, leave it on. It, The theory behind the way she does it with the essential oils is as it peels, it's going to pull the heat out. So there's not a... Yep. So, yep. All right, you can go put him out there. He's a... Yeah, he's an Andalusian cross. And his sire is a... His sire is a, a Puri, which is a purebred Spanish horse. And he's out of a thoroughbred mare. And um, I don't know who started him. He had about 30 days, but they were a god-awful piece of shit to him. I'll tell you that. If you want to tie him right here with that lead rope, just, I can do it. I can help you learn. Always make sure when you put the halters on that they are as tight as you can get them so they don't slip off because they will slip off out here. They'll rub them, slip them off. Perfect. No, it's okay. He's got a pretty big head. He doesn't have no little bitty. He sure doesn't have a head like Pepper, that's for sure. All right, Jerry, thank you. So anyway, Lacey's trying to save a deformed, nasty calf that'll never be worth anything, but her yeah, heart no. feels good. <sighs> it's like that baby Appaloosa out there. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all. Y'all. I really hadn't said anything because, you know, we have people that are in our business and it doesn't matter what the fuck we do here. They're going to have something to say. I'm going to walk. I should get in the gator, but I don't. The noise. <laughs> it's bad when you'd rather walk than you get in the gator because your brain can't take the noise. We had a set of twins born here the other night. Twin Appaloosas. The biggest one was born first. We didn't know there were twins. So let me start over. We didn't know there were twins. We had two babies born. <clears throat> and... 
the first one was born big red bag um the mare the bag was really thick it was red bagged i had never heard that term before but when we sent pictures to the vet they said that's a red bag foal um we had to rip the bag and get it out and anyway the mare jumped up first of all he came out breech which was backwards and um <clears throat> Sorry, I still have a lot of lung complications too. And I get some complaints of people that talk about my breathing. And I want for you guys to know from me to you, it's, it annoys me as bad as it does you that I have to like, even, it pisses me off that I have to stop my conversation with you to explain my breathing because I'm going to get complaints from strangers about I'm a heavy breather. I was on a ventilator last year in the hospital. I was on a high flow vent. I was in the hospital um, for 28 days total that was total time and um because I went they sent me home and then I went back almost died from COVID and as much as I would love to tell you that I'm okay um I still struggle and so um I started to go to physical therapy and I probably should have I don't have as much time so I've been doing virtual physical therapy and it's very um it's very disheartening to have people that like have never met somebody I can't I'm pretty strong and I have stayed off of social media for the last two months and really neglected my followers not because I don't love my followers um but because of just the god-awful mean things that people say that I just you know yes Maggie we're headed to see the babies so I just want to take time to let you guys know I am a heavy breather <laughs> I have to remember through my nose, through my nose, through my nose, but I have heart damage that we just discovered, um, pretty bad from the COVID also. And I had to have eight treatments of remdesivir, five are recommended, but on day five, I was not improving. In fact, I had slipped into a, um, pretty good resting coma and they went ahead and began dexamethasone with remdesivir on day six. Day six, seven, and eight, um, I began to improve with the help of dexamethasone. Um, they said that I probably have a autoimmune disorder and um, underlying, and uh, my immune system was just fighting so hard that inflammation set in everywhere. So the dexamethasone calmed that down enough that the remdesivir actually did save me. M maybe the dexamethasone saved me. But unfortunately, I do have some side effects from the remdesivir that are bad. So we're trying to get my heart slowly strong. I don't want to do a lot of cardio. I can't take it. I don't want to die of a heart attack at 35 years old and leave my child motherless. So I just have a lot of health complications that people don't know anything about. And then I just have a world of people online that just think that because my husband's a kill buyer that I should be subjected to their horrid behavior. So, um, remdesivir saved Jacob and it saved me. So, I stand by that. Now, anyway, the mare, um, this mare would not gain weight. She kept getting a bigger belly, a bigger belly, a bigger belly. And um, I cannot wait to show you this baby. But anyway, we um, called her mom and said, look, we have to have the vet look at her. I don't know what's wrong. She's not gaining weight. In fact, she's losing weight. We tried Blue Bonnet Mare Care Feed. She sent all this stuff. I mean, and this is the thing about livestock. Sometimes you can do everything right and they're still not like gaining weight. They're still not thriving. They're still not, you know, and it's really disheartening because... Um, for me, I also have the anxiety and the pan just the sheer panic of um, that I'm going to be judged on social media. So anyway, Mare goes into labor, middle of the night, lightning storm. And the first baby's born. It is backwards. The mare gets up and runs off with it dangling out of her behind. Awful, horrible. <laughs> Finally get her stopped, get the baby pulled. He's red bag. It's a cold he had dummy foal syndrome so while they're working on him almost an hour later she has a second fucking baby lays down and pops it out in two seconds well the colt was a giant he was huge 
The second baby was also breech. It also had a very thick bag, but it is a dwarf. It's a dwarf. It's literally a dwarf. I mean, it might not maybe really be a dwarf, but we call her a dwarf. So this is the filly. Oh, oh, she's a couple days old now. But the colt, I have pictures of him. I'll post, we have pictures of when he passed. He had dummy full syndrome and we were not able to save him. And this mare has put on so much weight almost instantly. She was so bad. We had the vet come out and the vet couldn't figure it out. They tried to palpate her and the mare tried to kick their head off. But this baby is the size of my, my pocket. Like, and the mom is just the best mare in the whole world. But I wanted to make sure that this filly was going to make it before I showed her to you guys because there's always just so much hate online. And I mean, we didn't do anything wrong. We didn't breed the mare. We're not the ones that didn't check her. Look, she just, she wants me to scratch her and she'll scratch the baby. So unfortunately her colt did die and the technical death was due to, he was red bagged and I think he had some oxygen deprivation. She ran around with him dangling. So long story short, um, he, he didn't make it. And he was huge. He was twice the size of this baby and healthy. I do think that um, had we known, I, I mean, of course, I have all the regret in the world. Like, oh, I wish we would have. But every time we put her in a stall, she would fret and walk the stall. And she wasn't keeping weight on. She was just dropping weight rapidly. And, um, yeah, she was dropping weight rapidly. So we turned her out thinking that was best. Well, then when she went into damn labor, she ran off with the baby day. I mean, it's just we've had a lot of, oh, you know, you can't do the right thing. Like, we never... But anyway, when I tell you this baby is tiny, I am five foot one, and this baby does not hardly go to my knees. This baby is something out of a storybook. It is, her mom is only 14 hands, 14 one hands tall. She's a POA, but the vet technically called her a dwarf. She said, I think it's a dwarf. And I go, is that a thing? She goes, I don't know, but I don't know. I mean, I have a baby that's not much older that's out here. Let me see where my other baby is. Where's the other baby? And it's a, it's a normal baby. It's a race baby. Come on. And when you see the difference in these foals, come on, mama. You will not even believe. Like, that baby is almost to my boobs. That baby goes to my knees. <laughs> But I have pictures of the colt that didn't make it. I'll post them in the Wild Tribe after hours. But they'll be graphic, obviously. And he was beautiful. He was identical to her. Just, he was this big. He was huge. And unfortunately, the official vet diagnosis was dummy full syndrome. He just, um, when he finally did get out, he never really, there's Nukes. And Nukes is going to a home in Arizona. Look at that beautiful mane. Um, and my Frisians. He was huge, born backwards, yes, and we had to pull, and it's just a freak of nature. Um, this one was actually backwards also and had to be pulled, and her bag was very, very thick. And the vet thinks, of course, we don't know a lot. We're not a stud farm, um, and she would have gone home much quicker, but we just didn't have the ability to get her there we didn't know when she was going to fall and she kept being very hard to palpate. Um, Maggie, I, I don't want to explain red bag syndrome to you guys because it was a term I was not familiar with. I'm not a stud farm. I'm not a breeding operation. Um, outside of maybe having a mare or two of my own that I fall out, we had an accidental oops and it's a fantastic baby. This is our little oops baby. And, um, her mom's name is, um, her mom's name is, um, Polito, Polito Jen. And she is a Mr. Polito out of a Thanks Jen's mare that is a daughter of Strawfly Special that has had multiple All-American Futurity qualifiers. So this mare, Jacob and I had bought for a fortune. We bought her for a lot of money. I started her as a barrel horse and really loved her and decided I wanted to breed her. So I had her bred to Trace Ace and she didn't take. And we turned her out in the field um, with the mares that had babies. She got bred, you guys are going to die. I almost died. We had a mare that we purchased with a Mr. Polito colt on her side. So by the same sire is this mare. And he was not quite ready to wean. We just got the DNA back. This baby's dad 
is only one year older than it. This mare got bred. This is how you know that... that sh this is some stupid shit. Like, this is some stupid shit that you would never fathom could happen. And it only happens to people like me so that people online can talk about what a fucking idiot I am. But my mare that came up open, who was being bred to a $10,000 stud fee, um, ended up bred when we brought her home to another mare's May baby. So, like, I guess he was not. He was, he was old enough to wean. I mean, so basically... He was born like in end of April, beginning of May, and it was the following year in March that he bred her. So he was like nine, nine, ten months old. She got bred to a ten-month-old colt. Only it only happens to me. Like things like this don't happen to normal people because um, normal people, and if they do, they just don't tell the public. They just don't tell the. They just don't tell the public. <laughs> they don't tell the public. So, long story short, this is our oops, and her mother and her father are by the same stud, and she's uh, line bred. She's line bred, Mr. Jess Perry. It is the dumbest thing I've ever accidentally, non-intentionally um, had happen in my life, but I'm very grateful for her, and she's very healthy, and she was born here, actually, um, in... Um, in the <laughs> in the middle of a group of recipient mares, we had this mare in there because I was going to take her and have her checked to rebreed. <laughs> and um, before we could even check her, um, she had a baby. <laughs> so, uh, and she had this baby in the middle of t 20 other horses. And it is her first foal. And we sent in DNA to try to match up the only three colts that we have on our facility because I don't have a stud. I had three colts though. Um, a Johnny Reb Jackson, um, a Trace Fortunes, and then the one that's by the, the same sire as her mother. And that's the dad. So she is by a son of Mr. Polito out of a daughter of Mr. Polito. The sire's mom is dominating speed, which is the sire is a full brother to a horse that just won half a million dollars. So the sire's fantastic. The dam we paid a fortune for. The second dam, this mo this mare's mom is thanks, Jens. Anyway, I named the filly. Now we have the had to file a breeder's report on the stud. It's a whole fucking ordeal. But the little filly's name is Dominatrix, and it's Dominatrix with two X's because her sire's registered name is Dominating Polito. <laughs> So dominating Polito and um, Polito Jen's baby's name is Dominatrix. And the reason I did two X's is because it's two times the Mr. Polito, the two times line bread. But the Philly's fantastic. And anyway, there's the story of the day that my hate group can um, discuss what a fucking idiot I am. And trust me, the, and this is one instant that I just agree that I would have never thought that could happen. So, um... Yeah, he was, uh, you know, born, like, I think he was born either, like, May, and he ended up breeding her um, in March, roughly the beginning of March, so. And then we have that, which we didn't know was pregnant with twins. But look how much better the mare looks. Like, as soon as she had the babies, all the weight is picking back up. But the vet did tell me that they've had a couple of mares that had red bag syndrome that did that. Like maybe there was an infection or something and that's why the placenta was hardening and that's why she was dropping all the weight. So the good news is um, now that the babies are out and the placenta is out, the mare is just putting on weight rapidly. The, mid, the little dwarf foal is doing fantastic. The inbred filly is uh, probably going to be a world champion because that's just the way God works. And here are my Frisians. This is Pixie the stripper. Stop it. Hey, no. Both of you. Now, Snickers, Bear, don't antagonize. So this is Cambria. This is my fire breathing angel baby. And she is by Henry E. And she is out of a, um, her mother is like a half painted draft, half um, saddle bred mare. And this is Cambria. And Cam, uh, I mean, this is Victoria. This is Cambria. And this is Victoria. And Victoria is also by Henry E. And Henry E. is a gorgeous imported Frisian that stands um, in Minnesota. But her dam is a daughter of Grand Design, who is an Imperial Frisian and a Frisian sport horse. So she's actually, 
like three quarters basically Frisian. So her um, sire is a full blood heritage horse. Her sire is a heritage horse. Her dam is by Grand Design, who is half Frisian, I think half Appaloosa or Knob Strooper. And then on the bottom of that, this mare is out of a spotted mare. Back then, there weren't a lot of Knob Stroopers in the United States, so they called them just just spotted mares. But if you really go back and research her dam, her dam's dam was half Knob Strooper. So that's kind of cool that she's and I have the full brother to her that's a little bit uh, one year younger. Now this is Pixie. And Pixie is half Frisian. Um, I, my husband wanted me to sell her and he stayed on me about selling her because she's not registered where the others are. But she's out of a thoroughbred mare. And I just really love this mare. So we're actually going to um, keep her. And I've had several people contact me and I just never, I never sell her. I just keep making excuses not to sell them because I love them. So I'm going to keep these two lovely ladies. Um, I have this mare's full sister and this, um, well, they're fillies and this filly's full brother that are registered. And I bought another pair of registered, um, weaned fillies and I bought a stallion recently. So what's kind of cool is her full brother is also by Henry E. So he cannot breed any of my registered mares. Well, I guess they can because I have a two times Mr. Polito over there. So while we're just line breeding shit, maybe I should just breed them to their brothers. No, that's just kidding. That would never happen. I'm, I'm totally, totally kidding. Um, <laughs> or am I? No, I am. Um, so these mares cannot be bred to my colt because they all have the same sire. As I say that and I watch my beautiful baby nurse over there whose mom and dad are half siblings. Um, <laughs> like, I'm not kidding. When I tell you that I, my jaw dropped of, I have three colts and the only one that I really didn't think could be the sire was the youngest one. And it's the sire. So anyway, so these girls are registered. Um, these girls are registered and the little girls are registered. And because her mom is a painted draft mare, her little sister, Cambria's little sister, stop being ornery. Stop. Have manners. I am not your scratching pole. Is beautiful. Her sister is black, but has the biggest bald white face you've, I mean, huge bald white face. So she's like solid black and her bangs are long like this. And then when her bangs blow, there's this big, massive white face. So anyway, but Pixie was raised by a breeder and I know who her sire is and they just will do nothing to help me get the papers on her but she is a Frisian and she's out of a thoroughbred mare and I just absolutely love her so I'm actually going to keep her and I don't know if I'm going to breed her to their this this mare's brother when he gets a little older um I'm sure we'll break her to ride but I would like to keep her to breed just because she is a great quality mare and if you're gonna breed to have a half you know I can register the foal with the Frisian Sport Horse Association because my mine are registered but I just figure if I'm gonna have a grade mare in my herd it might as well be like a really good quality very Frisian-esque you know so that's my thought I just really love her but Jacob bought me a half Percheron half Frisian I don't know if you guys have seen him yet um he's not registered I am gonna leave him a colt and I'm gonna breed him to quarter horse mares um so we'll go look at him nukes you have to stop walking the fence buddy you ladies cannot go with me I appreciate the gesture that you want to be up my ass and my best friend okay they're like when I tell you then they're like like let's just let's just in case y'all are wondering what my life is like with Frisians. You're beautiful. They love, they, they just have always just loved me. And it is so funny because my staff have never liked them like Jess and the girls would always be like, I hate Frisians. They're awful. They're so mean. And I'm like, what did you do to them? Not that Jess would ever be mean, but I think they can sense fear. And I think if you show any fear, then they get afraid because you're afraid. Oh my God. Hey, can you two quit? I just, I think that's a lot of it. I think that they just, I think they just sense fear. Like, and it's hard. Like if you don't know a horse and they swarm you like that, it's hard not to be um, like a little bit concerned, you know? So I think that people that show any fear at all whatsoever, they, um... Get, they get afraid. Look at Pixie. 
Pixie hated people when she came here. She was a psycho about it. Nukes, I sure do love you, sir. Hello, sir. We're going to go walk my entire property just because I think it's good for my heart to do. The reason I think this is so important for me is because with my heart and the remdesivir damage that they keep calling it damage from remdesivir, but I just think COVID really fucks your body up. <laughs> so I feel like I can stop at each pin and take a breath and rest so it's not too much cardiovascular, but it's enough that I am building my lungs a little bit and I am exercising. So what I will tell you guys is, is that with the Frisians, if you, if you ever are going to buy your heart horse or you're going to buy a horse that you don't, if you're not somebody that's going to be competitive because outside of showing maybe cowboy dressage, things like that. I wouldn't say that Frisians are going to be prime head heel horses or, you know, anything like that. They're just not. They're, they're a little bit more animated and not quite as fast. And there's just a lot of reasons I say that. But I can tell you that the personality of the Frisians is so incredible in all of these animals I would either one, immediately go breed your mare to Henry E, their sire, or two, um, try to find a foal of his. My Frisians have the most incredible personalities. Here's my stud, the Frisian sport horse stud colt. He is a leopard, that's him. He is leopard Appaloosa, but he's a buckskin. He is a buckskin. He has black legs, a black head, black mane and tail, but the spots on his entire body are this big and they are buckskin or done. I have to send in work, paperwork to have him um, color tested, which is fine. Um, there's Cambria's sister right behind him, the one with the big bald face. That's her right there. So one time somebody said something about, we turn horses out in the back pasture. Do you see the horses in the back pasture back there? What I want for you guys to know is that when I trained racehorses, I kept a handful of horses. Um, and what, what actually happened was <laughs> I sold a horse right before I quit training racehorses and his name was JB Shyster. And he actually ended up in the, I sold him in Louisiana and about six months later he ended up in our kill pen and I didn't even recognize him. That's, he just, he looked t terrible. I mean, and of course, people accused me of trying to slaughter my own, my own racehorse, which was just an awful thing for them to do because I was as heartbroken. And he did, Jacob made sure he went to a rescue. But the pictures when he left my barn, he looked immaculate with dapples. And I actually screenshotted the for sale ads and where somebody bought him. And so I learned then, <clears throat> nobody's going to value or appreciate your animals like you are. You know, these horses didn't win for other people. These horses didn't um, add value to other people. So what I stopped doing was selling my retired racehorses. So I have a pasture here at my facility full of my retired racehorses and they're mine and I value them a great deal. And that's just the, kind of the end of that to be quite honest with you. And it's not um, a dig on anyone else. I don't have a fortune. I don't have tons of money, but I have enough and they will never want for anything. So, uh, sorry, I'm checking the waters. So with all of that being said, um, it's disheartening also to do something so kind and to have people try to, why doesn't she ever show the back pasture? Well, because there's nothing back there for sale and it's a bunch of old gildings, pick and winners. I'll tell you their registered names. Pickin' Winners, SR Red Storm Cloud, Pops Racer, Mortis, my barrel horse is back there, the one that Fallon had and I got back. Um, Regal he is, is back there. That's Reggie. He's phenomenal also. Um, so yeah, that's what's back there. And they're all insured and they've been insured. 
since they came off the track. And what I said the other day, I was like, well, if any of them croak, all they'll do is probably pay back the hay bill for the last year. And I make jokes and I have an inappropriate sense of humor, but we don't plan to kill them. And they will be back there as long as they live. We don't ride them. We don't do anything with them. They are my responsibility. I don't ask you guys to pay to feed them. I've never fundraised to help any of them. They are my retired older barrel horses and race horses that I don't think anybody else would retire and do right by. So they're my responsibility and um, we can walk back. I'm going to check their water tank here in a minute. Here's Moose, you guys. We're going to get him up this uh, week and offer him for consignment. He is a 12-year-old draft cross. He is currently on the website. He is probably the only other horse on the property that, well, no, I have one more. This horse is so unbelievable, so unbelievable, and I think that he's every bit as docile as Peyton. The other horse that I think is that good um, are Luke and Cookie. Hi, Spicy, but I want you guys to see the pastures. I mean, they all have such nice pins. Hi, this is Luke on the left and Cookie. Luke is the best boy. He loves humans. And he desperately wants a home. This horse is absolutely broke to death, bomb proof. He's been used for English and Western lessons. He would be great for a child. He would be great for any adult rider. But this is Luke and he is an Andalusian cross. Um, his Coggins is out of California. And the reason he ended up here is he has a small sarcoid. Um, and we actually treated it and it is gone down. It, it was this big and it's gone down to about this big and it's on the side of his sheath and people didn't know if it was cancer or what but as you can see I think maybe one more treatment one more little freezing and that sarcoid will be gone and he will never have to worry about that again if it was cancer it wouldn't have shrunk down like that you two quit look at Luke he wants attention so bad he's willing to be mean to cookie for it now this is Cookie. He's also on the website. He is, I believe, 13. I'd have to look. I can't remember. I'm um, 13, 14 years old. And then of course we have Spicy Pony. Um, we have Giant Mesa. Giant Mesa got a reprieve. If anybody is looking for an off-the-track thoroughbred that's racetrack retirement program eligible, please pass him on to them. He is such a phenomenal animal. He is just the best. He honestly is. Hi, buddy. And then um, Daisy, my daughter's pony, and Lacey. Lacey also got a reprieve, so she gets to be here a little longer. Goose up there. Oh, no, there's nothing about any of these horses. If something bothered them, um, I would absolutely, first of all, maybe not offer them. Or secondly, um, they wouldn't be priced like that. So, hey, I do have a question. Does anybody want to sponsor two Jenny donkeys? There are two painted Jenny donkeys that are fixing to have babies any day. They're in my husband's ship list. I have a donkey pen, by the way, that just my daughter's donkeys live in. And they take up no money. Like, they're virtually, like, I mean, they just take up no money. So, I thought about it the other day. And I just want to offer, if you wanted to purchase or sponsor a donkey, but you can't take it, they can retire here because this pen has access to the back 15 acres. I just open the gate and they go in and out. Sometimes my gildings will be in this pen. You'll see them right here. My gildings go back out, but there is plenty of room for a couple of donkeys. We keep a hay bale in this pen and the water in this pen with a float because obviously my gildings come in and out. There's quite a few horses. Here's all of the thoroughbreds. They all got reprieves. Um, and I just want you guys to see they have more than one round bell because there's such a big group of them. They have this round bell as well as that one up there. They've just about finished. But they are getting all the hay they can eat. And our hay comes from one hay man. And he is fantastic. He absolutely um, bales it. And it's fertilized. And we have the protein count and all of that. So it's like premium 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 hay so this is a pen of kind of sold horses that haven't been picked up um there's a little poa mare in here and levi is in here and 
my sister bred soon to be, um, Nina, bailed soon to be, and my sister took her and had her bred. She's bred to um, Relentless, so hopefully she checks in full if she doesn't. That little horse right there is one that was purchased and left here. Levi and that mare have been purchased and kind of left here, but their owner got sick, so I'm really trying to work with her. Um, but here's soon to be. Look how good she looks, you guys. Hi, Mama. Hi, Sooner. So Sooner went and got bread and is back. Look how big Levi is. Like she's a full, like she's a full grown thoroughbred, 16 hands. And Levi is two, but not until like August or September. Like he's a coming two year old, but he's like a year and a half old and already every bit as big as she is. So I'm going to talk to Levi's owner, the Le Levi and the pony are owned, see what she wants to do. The board has gotten very, very crazy, maybe $3,000 in board. I'm not super sure what we're going to be able to do, but the pony is going to be a fantastic little hunter jumper, lesson type pony. Levi is going to be an out of this world prospect. He's a puree. Um, and that little horse right there also is maybe going to need soon to be is not for sale. She just, I wanted her somewhere where the horses were like, like these horses had been here for months, um, since November. And I knew that they were fully quarantined. So I wanted to put soon to be out with horses that for sure were not contagious in any way. So soon to be is right there. And Nina, hopefully will see this and you guys, um, make sure you, um, tag her Nina Thomas she's a very very huge thoroughbred advocate she's um right now fundraising for the blind horse so please reach out to Nina Thomas if you would like to donate funds to the blind horse because that's something we could really use so there's Triton and Sace Sace is here because we were able thank you guys who did the $50 tack draw the $50 tack draw um makes about $5,000 per draw Hi, Triton. Hi, buddy. Hi, sir. It is so cool to see these very abused ranch horses that think humans fucking suck get to where this is them. Like, that's Diablo, who hated humans. Kept busting out of the barn, running off, ran Jess over, flattened her over, running out of the stall. And look at them now. They're like, hey, hey. They're on five acres. Look at Twister. So this is what I call my bronc pin. It's kind of a joke. Um, but I really need for you guys, if you can sp if you can spare $50, we do a giveaway as soon as it reaches 100 people, which is the $5,000. And then Misty sends that whole chunk of $5,000 over. And I know it seems like a lot of money, but when you have five horses standing here um, that all need work and retraining, that's less. And I think he may be sold, which is fantastic. But we have Twister, Diablo, who is talking to me like we're friends, um, Sace, and um, Triton. These three are registered. Diablo, no, these four are registered. Les is the only one that's not. But these gildings needed this. They needed to not be slaughtered, and they needed to not be pawned off and they need to be retrained and they need the time and it's going to take months. It's going to take two or three months to get these horses, um, to their optimum potential. And my husband is not willing to tie up his operating capital whilst also throwing money into them. Like my husband says, when you buy a horse, that's not what you thought. Any dime you spend after that is throwing your good money after bad money. I think that from a business standpoint, that's a genius way to think. From an animal lover standpoint, it's a very hard pill to swallow. So what I created to incorporate being able to help them is we do these tack draws as well as um, having the wild tribe after hours. Please, you guys, I'm begging, like, please, I'm begging. It's $20 a month to join the wild tribe after hours that money supports these horses as well along with that pin of horses that the owners if you know three of them the owners have defaulted and we're just trying to help the owners so they can still obtain their horse magic was also one of them but his owner just said there's no way i can do it please sell him for the board um i don't have to like just jump and ship those kind of horses because this is 
um, what's important to me, you know, to be able to try to help them from start to finish. So this pin of gildings right here, you can see, I mean, like they're not afraid of us anymore. You watch this motherfucker drag me and rip the rope out of my hand and fucking freak out and try to run off with me dangling from the lead rope. Like he was out on the humans. Like the first week he was in this pen, he stayed back there, back there. This horse right here was so fucking scary that Dara wouldn't touch him. I sent him to Dylan Fox's and Dylan Fox sent him home and told me you need to, that's dog food. Like that's dangerous. That's going to hurt somebody. And I'm going to tell you now, I'm telling you that Tylen can do anything in the world with that horse and ride him to the moon and back. But it was not a today thing. The first thing they needed was to go back. And this is what I tell people. I don't believe that horses should stay stalled. When I'm having to sales prep them, that's one thing. We sales prep them. They have to be up, I understand. But if you look at my personal horses, if you look at everything else, I believe in herd mentality. The first thing I did with these gildings is put them up and let them know people aren't going to hurt you. Let's get your teeth floated. Let's get you de-beamed. Let's get you wormed good. So we put them up in the barn long enough to get the necessities done. And then I put them back in a herd mentality because what I wanted them to do was revert back to being horses. Just revert back to being a horse. What the wild tribe after hours and the tack draw have afforded me is about ten to $15,000 that I can put into my pocket, not my husband's. And it allows me to be able to have the tractor, to have the gator, to have the things that were just always, hey, that's just not an expense we can afford type thing. Those things help my staff to help me to help the horses. And there's lots of people that get really angry and they're like, your husband should, you know, I understand the jealousy. I understand the anger. I'm not a rescue. You're pissed off. You don't have those things. You're pissed off that you're sitting at home behind the computer and can barely pay your bills. And I have a world of people wanting to help me help the horses. But this is why it's because I may have taken a little hiatus, but now that my hiatus is over and I'm back and we're walking this property, Every horse that was here before that hiatus is still here. They're all still accounted for. I didn't ship anything to slaughter or dump it or get it off my bills while I wasn't making content and I wasn't making as much in stars and in commercial revenue. I just had enough money from the Wild Tribe After Hours and also from the, the tack draw that we did for Donnie. Donnie number 511 blind. We've got his eyesight back. I don't know if I told you. We think that we're dealing with a touch of maybe moon blindness. What he did was at some point somebody had hurt him around the head. We don't know if they hit him. We don't know if they had a, it looked from the hair pattern that fell out after we started working on him to decrease the inflammation. Maybe they had a chain bonnet. If you've ever seen a bonnet to tie their head down and the perfect bonnet of hair fell out. Weirdest fucking thing I've ever seen in my life. We started taping it and doing these exercises the osteopath showed us. Got all the inflammation out of his head, PEMFing it. I have a PEMF machine because of you guys and your support. Couldn't afford it without y'all. Started doing that, and his eyesight is just coming back. Still a little sketchy, but getting on and off of him, it's not a today thing. Riding him is not a today thing. I have to tell Tylen all the, all the time, it's okay. That's not a today thing. That horse is going to be fine. He's going to be fantastic. And we've saved his life. But we had some money left over because the vet bills were not as expensive as we thought. He didn't require surgery. So we ended up taking on Triton because Triton is now blind in the left eye. Triton sold at Billings. And unfortunately, after he sold in the back pins, he hung his fucking head in the hay rack and crushed his eye socket on the left side and messed his eye up. So Triton is also one of ours. Um, that we have taken on. So we have Triton. My husband didn't buy him. Someone else did. My husband, my husband has gotten the reputation. And I heard somebody say recently, um, she's a liar. They don't do that. Actually. Yeah, they do. Um, anybody can call Justin Knowles and say, Hey, Justin, does Jacob take horses off you after the sale? Absolutely. There's other buyers I'm a guy from Oregon, another guy. And what, what my husband has a reputation for now is he buys what he buys. Here's my ponies that we turned all the ponies out. I'm funny about spring grass and ponies. I don't want them to founder. 
but they really needed out of that little pin and I got tired of looking at them just back there and I thought you know what I have an empty pin it's five fucking acres let's go in here and see these look how good my arena looks now look at them I thought how what a cool pony pony environment how cool is it that the ponies have five acres a shed the round bell. I mean, they get to just live the high life, you know. We finally figured out what was wrong with the little white pony. She would never gain weight, never gain weight. We were having a lot of trouble with her. I thought we were going to euthanize her, so I never did offer her back for sale. Um, she had a botworm infestation. We tube wormed her a week ago. This bitch has gained 100 pounds. I feel like she was a walking skeleton, and I never said anything because I knew that she's been skinny. She arrived here emaciated. And she stayed skinny and we couldn't get weight on her. We couldn't get weight on her. And finally we tube wormed her. And I'm telling you, she shit bots, red bots. And she had a tooth abscess on this side. And we finally got, and that was because you guys um, fundraised and did the $50 floats. And we were able to float her teeth and that we had to pull the tooth right there. But she is gaining weight finally. And um, I mean, she's been here forever. And I, I mean, I was afraid to post her because people would say, why hasn't she gained weight? Well, I don't know. I mean, we're feeding her. We're all the other ones are fat and look good. I don't know why this one's not. Well, she had some underlying issues. Hi, sir. Where's your brother? Look at the little ponies be ponies. <laughs> Fucking little shits. Oh my God. I'm going to have to. Oh my God, you two. You hear him? What are you doing, sir? Where's your brother? Look at him in the shed over there. These are all quarantining in one pin together because they're going to Yellowstone, a dude ranch. Um, and they just needed to quarantine together and have a full 30 days after vaccination together with no mixed in. Um, and so we have all four of them, but oh, ponies. But Canyon and Bluff and yeah, pony tudes. Here are some of the donkeys. If anybody wants to sponsor a donkey, I'll be happy to show. Okay, so one, two, three, four. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. My husband keeps saying there's 14. It, every time I count, though, I wonder if there's like one maybe behind the shed or something. I'm like, we don't really know how many are here. We just know that every day when we go in the pen, we make sure they have hay, they have water, and nothing is sick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I think he might be counting my daughter's two donkeys too, which would be make that would make 13. So there would be 13 with her too. Oh, and there was another one. Okay. So there's 12. Yes. So there is 12 donkeys plus my daughter's two make 14. That's why there was 14 donkeys. I need to notate that on my notes. But anyway, there's several bread. So these right here are moms with a baby and they're bred back. Mom with a baby bred back bread back. There's a jack up there. Um, right here are two painted jennies that are bred and do any time and they are adorable and they are heavy bread. You guys, these two jennies are heavy bread, beautiful painted jennies. They would match Camponcho and mommy Camponcho. And, um, this, these right here came from the, where Camponcho came from. And as you can see, the little Jack looks identical to Camponcho. What I was even thinking, I don't want to leave Camponcho a stud. I'm not trying to raise donkeys. I was thinking maybe even with him, if somebody wanted to maybe, several people wanted to sponsor the three, I could have him gilded and I could have Camponcho gilded because they don't need to keep reproducing. There's enough donkeys in the world. But look, sir, I like you and we're friends and I know what you want is a cookie. I didn't bring any this time. I'm sorry. Leslie, he may have been counting because there's, there's three fixing to have babies. But I never know with Jacob because I just don't. <laughs> All right, you guys. So this these are horses that came in. Um, that we have not evaluated yet. So this is a super nice black gilding. He's like 15 years old. This is a grandson of Frenchman's guy. He's got great papers. Um, and this is a super nice, super nice gilding that came from the same people who had Javi. And they have an Andalusian stallion. So I venture to say he's probably a quarter Andalusian. Not full for sure, but I mean, just from color and everything else you can tell probably not full. Now this pin up here is kind of 
cool. This pin we're fixing to disc up um, also. And this is what I call my dry lot. Um, the reason we have to have a dry lot, which is a pin that doesn't grow grass. And I've had people say, why do all the other ones have grass and you've let this one... We try to keep the grass down in here. So in case I have horses that come in with bad feet or anything else, we have a pin that we can pin horses that maybe don't need fresh spring grass. So please understand there's a reason this pin is, that, but they have hay. Um, right now I don't have anything with horrible feet problems. So I put four gildings in here. They're on full feed. So what we have, if you guys remember, my husband also took that done horse who is registered off of um, Duck. Duck bought him. Justin Nalls bought him. Um, got him in the back pins and he got hurt. At first, we didn't know what was wrong. I was just assuming, guessing, whatever. Um, in the end, it was kick marks and it um, got his hamstring. We've been getting him up once a day, PEMFing him, putting him back out. So he's just rehabilitating. The reason he's in here with these and not with those where he belongs is because they were picking on him and chasing him. Chasing him was not what was best for his leg that needs to heal. So that's why he's in here. 630 is in here because again, these gildings don't chase, they don't run, they don't be ugly. Um, and with his knee, he's sold. Um, this is what's best for him. I would love to put him out, but it seems like a lot of horses pick on him. That's not what's best for him. So those two are in here by necessity. Um, the little gated uh, Paso is fixing to get up in the barn as soon as I have a stall so we can start sales prepping him. I'm going to catalog him. He is just fantastic. He just needs rides every day. Um, not because he does anything wrong, but just to get him fit and get the muscle built back up um, and get him kind of shapey. But that's a phenomenal horse. He's on the website if you're a Paso fan. One of the nicest Passos I've ever had here. 100% sound. A great age enough that I can stand behind him and offer a vet check and catalog him. So we're going to do that. And then Risky Man, um, to yes, Toad is his name. That's right. Um, Risky is still here because I won't let my husband ship him to slaughter. <laughs> I just fucking refuse. It's not happening. So Risky is also on our dime. So from a business standpoint, I want for you guys to understand that my husband has the philosophy that anytime you have your operating capital tied up in a horse and it doesn't sell, ship it to slaughter, cut your loss, don't throw good money after bad, and put your operating capital into another animal that might be profitable. So it's very hard for me to convince my husband to have unsold horses of any kind because not only is the operating capital tied up in those animals, let's fast forward, now they're also, also costing money to feed every month. So now not only are they tying up operating capital that could be turning over making profit, they're also taking expense. It's not like a tractor or a car that it's tying up your operating capital. These also continue to cost money Every day they eat, they drink, they go through hay, they go through grain. So what my husband wants to do is to just cut the loss. So what I do with the wild tribe after hours and the tack draws and all of the things that bring in all the extra revenue is it prevents my husband from being on my ass about cutting, cutting the loss. What I can tell him is, is I'm sorry your operating capital is tied up. I have about $45,000 worth of my husband's operating capital tied up on this property in unsold inventory, closer to 50. And that's just, that's not horses that are currently listed. That's horses that are not listed that need a little bit of time. Those ones in the front pin, the Frenchman's guy, and the two, the black and the um, bay gilding. When they came in, they were sick. I thought they had strangles. I wasn't sure. I had them up there away from everything. Luckily, it was just an upper respiratory infection. But, but what I will tell you is that um, they didn't need to be sold right away. We needed to get them over that upper respiratory infection, let them freshen up, gain a little bit of weight. Oh, I broke. Gain a little bit of weight. And that's what was, that's what they needed. So is my husband happy about that? Fuck no. He wanted them to come in and be gone. Now, would they have sold right away? Probably because they're super broke. But then that meant that you guys as the consumer were going to have the vet bill. Could most of you stand it? Absolutely. But if we can turn them out, 
give them a shot of exceed, let them get sunlight, let them get out there, give them two weeks to get over that. What it guarantees is that the horse is going to be a better horse. Come in, relax, fresh. We're treating for ulcers while we're, you know, got the antibiotics working, started treating for ulcers. There's just a lot that we can do. And I couldn't afford to do that. I would have to be that shitty human who got them in on a Monday sick and had them for sale on Tuesday and not give them antibiotics and not care. And it's your problem, not mine, if I didn't have the tack draws and the wild tribe after hours. The money from those two things allow my life to be um, better <laughs> because I'm a much more relaxed happy human when I can do right by the horses. I'm not a monster, I'm not a piece of shit, I'm not a scammer, I'm not all of the mean things I've been called online, but I am a businesswoman. And my property costs anywhere from right now, it's costing 42,000 a month to keep the gates open. <clears throat> and for two months, I took a pretty good hiatus. So that's 84,000 that I had to come up with to keep the gates open without doing a lot online. I've been just not online. So I picked up a resip contract, did really good with that, made a great profit, great profit. I mean, unbelievable amounts of profit. Thank God. Thank you, Jesus. Because, um, without that, I don't know. And I'm going to have that contract this fall and I'm going to have that contract next year. And I ended up picking up another resip contract last week. So Lord pending that I can come up with enough mares, <laughs> I am going to have um, the ability to sell about 300 mares a year, not to slaughter, but to recipient farms. And that'll save 300 mares from slaughter a year. Mares that maybe are not broke, mares that maybe are not super sound, mares that I couldn't have offered to my clientele, but I can, I can offer them there. If anybody knows of mares that people need to get rid of, um, preferably that have already had a foal, we're always interested. Um, they need to be under tw under 12 years old. I would prefer the five or six, seven, eight-year-old type mares. Um, but anyway, I like that, that I can sell those mares and they can go to uh, a resip farm instead of slaughter. I made an advert for mares recently and somebody started getting on all of them. Ch <clears throat> Chelsea, piece of shit bitch. Um, and was saying, they're going to kill them. Don't give them to her. Don't sell them to her. They're for my resip contract. And um, again, I have about 300 mares between this fall and next spring that I'm not obligated by anybody's standards, but they're obligated to me to purchase up to a certain number. So we're going to start gathering and quarantining and vaccinating and getting those mares prepped to go. Um, and I'm grateful. So it allowed me to take a very big step back away from social media to focus on that and it helped my mindset a great deal and it not only helped my mindset a great deal what I want for you guys to know is I have started to notice lately that anytime my name is brought up there's so much positivity behind it that I'm very proud and if somebody is negative so many of you are willing to stand up to them that it's starting to combat their negativity to where they know better like um, Kathy, I think she did. Yes, ma'am. I think the only, there was only one that didn't receive a reprieve and it was 605. So, um, but obviously she's a good mayor. So, but I got enough reprieve money to be able to definitely foot the hay bill for, for the 10 days. So that's a great thing. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, what I have to do is find balance between my husband's operating capital and him being profit minded with no emotion towards the animals and then me having an abundance of emotion towards the animals, but also having to be profit minded because I have employees that need paid bills and all of that. And of course I want to make things easier on my staff. I mean, my staff for a long time didn't have the tractor. They didn't have the gator and it was very hard. It made for a very long, hard day here that those things are now not a problem anymore because we have the right tools and those things are afforded because some of you will join the wild tribe after hours again it's 20 bucks a month and let me remind you right now i'm eligible for a twenty thousand dollar bonus through facebook that they will pay me out of their money so let's take as much facebook money as we can 
for every new person who joins the wild tribe after hours in the month of April. So this month they double your subscription. So you give me $20 and join that group. And Facebook gives me $40 for recruiting a member. I don't know why they're doing that. Frankly, I don't care. I just know that for every one person that joins this month, I get 60 bucks. So if you can spare 20 bucks right now, click on the join group link at the top. You might have to update your Facebook pay settings, but that's 60 bucks for every one person. Last night when I looked, I think we have earned almost $8,000 of the 20,000. So we are trucking and it's going to be so great because horses like this horse that my husband saw at auction and normally would not have bid on, he did, but this horse has some front feet issues and he looks like absolute shit. Whoever had him should, you know, he was privately owned and looks like this. So shame on you, you know, um, he, he is by a son of Frenchman's guy. The note says his name is Edmund and that he's a finished barrel and pole horse or well started on the barrels and poles, but he's got these cracks in his feet. Let's see if I can show you guys. So he's got some crackage. I don't know if you guys can see that, that crack. Um, it's fairly severe. Um, I noticed in here you don't see it as much as, whoa, buddy, we put this foot forward. Thank you, sir. Look how gentle he is. Okay, there. Now we can really see it. Thank you. There we go. So if you can see that crack down the front of that foot. So we have x-rays lined up for this week. Um, and then we are going to shoe him based on those x-rays. And we are going to start him on hoof RX. And we are just absolutely going to change this horse's life. I mean, we are just absolutely, uh, do not escape. He's already shedding and gaining weight. He's been here a week. I know I haven't really showed him to you, but I wanted to make sure that all, that he wasn't a psychopath trying to kill us or something, but he isn't. And he's seven years old. Um, we're going to actually staple it and bondo it, but we are going to also x-ray it. And I think we're going to take the toe off. Um, and we're going to, we're going to put him in a set of wedge pads and try to stand him back up and get, cause as you can see, that toe is just out there. And, um, it's just such a shame that somebody allowed any of that to happen to him and didn't do a better job. They, they sure, seriously, whoever owned him should be ashamed. That's, um, and they can say, well, I had my farrier. Yeah. Well, your farrier is dumb and you shouldn't have performance horses if you don't know any better than that. Hi. So my husband went ahead and invested in him. And of course, in the ring, he didn't sell cheap. He brought 3000 because he's registered and you can ride him. And But anybody else would have bought him just to turn around and flip him and maybe not be honest about the feet. But we have x-rays. Um, we're going to x-ray, shoe him based on the x-rays. Let those Because the thing about feet is feet can grow out. Feet can grow out and completely repair themselves. You just have to have the right. Okay, so how about this? This thing came here a buttermilk buckskin and he's turning into a done stripes. I don't know if you guys can see. He's getting a dorsal stripe. Oh, too gross. Can you guys see the dorsal stripe trying to come? Look at the dorsal stripe. You'll see it. I don't know. Two crows came here a done and he's leaving. I mean, he came here a buckskin and he's leaving a done. But can we, um, Give a round of applause for the shine and the hair coming in. Like, can we, can we give a, look at that dorsal stripe. Stripes on the legs. There's pepperoni. And our hay brought to you by the wild tribe. And all of the people who paid reprieves. And Javi is gaining a ton of weight. So I just want to make sure that you guys understand this is what we're doing here. This is, I understand that some people don't fucking like me. You know what? There's a lot of fucking people in this world I don't like. Lots of people. The main difference I find here is, is if I don't fucking like you, I just pay no attention to you and I go on about my business and I keep winning. I can't understand the obsession with the constant, like, following what someone does and talking about them. Like, shut the fuck up. You're a loser. 
And you will hear me say that a lot. So if I offend you, this isn't the place for you. Oh, her grain is in. Here's the, the brood mares. The brood mares grain is in. Herc, what you doing? Herc had gotten an upper respiratory infection also, and he is doing so much better. We are going to, he gets, he actually gets um, scoped to make sure he's over it. So his, and his was not, when we cultured it, it was not, um, his was like allergies. It sucked. The blind horse is up in the barn. Hi, pretty girl. This is Miss Bud Light. Miss Bud Light Lime. This thing here is a psychopath. No, he's really going to be a good horse. Come here, sir. He just um, had a lot of meanness in his life. And there's Angel. Angel leaves tomorrow with um, Dylan. He's going to take her home and start riding her. This little mare right here I put up in the barn to try to put some weight on. She came in. We have not evaluated her yet either, but I wanted to, her to gain a little bit of weight before we evaluate her. This is a thoroughbred that the blind horse turns out with, and she leads him around. She's such a kind mare. She's sold, and she's getting to go with him. And then here's the off-the-track quarter horse. <whistles> Come here, big man. So as you can see, where's your hay bag? Oh, did you tear your hay bag up, Mama? But. Hi, baby. Sweet girl. <sighs> so. Him to the two boy. He gets to go back out with the babies today. He's released. But. This is my day. Or day. And as you can see, I have a lot going on. Which is great. It's fantastic. Um. But you can also understand how it's hard on me, too. Like, to have this much going on every day, this much noise. I've got all the staff. I mean, rested. You know, they're in the barn for various reasons. Um, the thoroughbred mare, we don't know. She came in poor. She's not gaining weight at all. So she's up so the vet can evaluate her. And that's the thing. Sometimes when horses don't gain weight fast and they came in poor, there's underlying issues, and we just have to each week check off. Like, why is it gaining weight? What's going on? And what I don't like is that you have rescues and individuals who want a virtue signal. Oh, well, I rehabilitated. Ma'am, I, I rehabilitate hundreds of horses a year. Some of them are easy. That broodmare has gained weight like nobody's business as soon as she had those foals. Like, if I showed you the picture from last week versus today... In seven days, she looks like a totally different animal. And then I could go shame people and tell them, look at what I did in a week. Look, this mare gained hundreds of pounds in a week. Like, you're not doing it right. There is no right way to do it because not every horse has the same underlying issues. Like, you can't tell somebody else that they're not rehabilitating their horse fast enough. Um, because we don't know the underlying cause of the weight loss. It's not always that somebody just wasn't feeding them. It's not always that somebody was just neglectful. Sometimes people don't know and they're like, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. This is bad. My horse is not gaining weight. I don't know. I'm going to take it to the cell barn because I don't want it getting thin on my place. Maybe somebody else can fix it, you know? And there's no shame in, and this is another thing I try to tell people. There's absolutely no shame. There's no shame in taking your horse to the cell barn. Lots of people do it. Lots of them get great homes. The cell barns are getting in today's market to where the majority of the audience is buying horses. We go to cell barns where it is standing room only. There are hundreds of people at an auction barn to bid on horses. So the chances of kill buyers getting horses now versus before is not the same. Very few horses bring kill price. Very few horses. Most horses bring more than kill price. So what we unfortunately um, find is that some of the horses my husband gets for slaughter are horses that truly have under no it's not unfortunate it's becoming a blessing for the horses because the horses that are going to slaughter right now are horses that no horse trader could make work nobody could rehabilitate so it is leveling out the slaughter before slaughter used to be mostly made up of young viable good solid horses they were the fattest and you know no 
But I will say, there's lots of young horses going to slaughter that are not broke because there's not a lot of horse trainers out there. Colt breakers and horse trainers are getting few and far between, and I think we're fixing to see an influx in a lot of young, unbroke horses going to kill because nobody can find, nobody can find good, solid colt starters. They're not on every corner like they used to be. Cowboys are not on on every corner. It's just not a thing. It's it used to be. You used to be able to get a horse broke for five or six hundred dollars a month. It's now twelve to fifteen hundred dollars a month for a good one that's going to feed your colt and actually put the rides on them. It's getting to where your average person cannot afford to raise a baby from birth to broke before they sell it because unfortunately at fifteen hundred dollars a month for a quality colt breaker that will actually improve your horse's value, it's impossible. Like it's you can't. Pay, you have 10 months that's fifteen thousand dollars just in training so what i've done is i've hired really good colt guys here at my facility and we're gonna start i i try to stay one step ahead of the market like where do i see the market going i see that there's few and few and few and few and few colt starters so we're fixing to see an influx and we're starting to see it now of registered good quality jackie roans these young fame these young registered horses that people couldn't get broke themselves because they're just a little bit um, spirited, but they're great sound horses. And so what I tried to do is just stay one step ahead of the market. And so I've enlisted colt breakers and guys that have great ability to work with problematic horses. And now we have a training program here. So I'm ever evolving. I'm ever one step ahead of everything else. Um, as far as abuse and scams and all of the things, I just, I want to put that to rest. And I want for people to know that you might not like me. You might um, not like my business practices. And I'm okay with that. I just want you to know I'm totally okay with that. But here's the thing. I put in black and white everything. And you know the risk you're taking. And if you still take that risk and it doesn't go your way, that's just, that's horse trading. That's just horse trading. So I don't think that there are too many horses and not enough homes at this point, Diane. Um, to be honest, we used to ship thousands of horses a year. We're down to hundreds. I don't even know that we sent 100 horses to slaughter last year, maybe four or five loads. There was nothing hardly that left unless it was really bad. My husband is now partnering with another guy, um, you know, him and Mason and, and one other guy. Um, combine what they need to ship and ship them together because their horses just aren't out there and we're just not seeing as many non-viable horses so what i'm trying to do is to realize that the kill horse industry is changing because there are fewer and fewer and fewer horses going to slaughter there aren't very many horses cheap enough anymore um so until slaughter prices go up to kind of match the market right now um, a lot of the plants in Mexico are going to cattle. Um, they'll, they'll kill cows four days a week and horses only three days a week where they used to be just um, only, only um, a horse plant. And that's great. So there's less and less horses going to slaughter. Um, and I think that the, the, everybody wants to say that the kill pin rehoming thing was such a scam. But the truth is in the last five years or six years it has evolved the horse industry to where people are so much more aware they are so much more aware that horses can go to slaughter more rescues and individuals are going to auction barns um and i think that a lot of horses are getting a chance that weren't in the past um i also think that because of the price of, of the horse industry it's knocked a lot of backyard and small breeders out and i see people complain all the time that oh, i'm a small breeder and i just can't afford to do it anymore you shouldn't have probably been a breeder to begin with. No offense, but if you're breeding animals that are subpar just because you like the mom and you thought those are not the most marketable animals and you're breeding for emotion and not for business sense and that puts livestock in danger. The problem is at the end of the day, no matter how much you love your horse or it's a pet to you, 90% of the horse industry, they're still livestock. Meaning if you bred your grade mare to a registered stud and you got a baby and then you decide you can't break it and I saw a lady say oh, I used to raise five or six babies a year um you know and now I can't afford it anymore good 
good. Good. I mean, there's enough fucking accidental shit like the baby that we had. I mean, it was just, an, it was an accident. Mine. My own. I mean, and I'm a professional. And I know that it happens to other people because I've seen stallion owners say, we had a mare we thought was open. She had a baby. It didn't DNA back to our stud. It's probably by a yearling. Bob Burt and Darian Burt had it happen a couple of years ago. They had a really good race mare come up bred, not open. And it wasn't by their stud because they thought she was open. And a yearling. A yearling must have got her bred through the fence. Those things fucking happen. It's life. They're animals. It's nature. But I want to say that there's enough of those things. The only thing I can hope is that when they do happen at a bigger breeder, like, my, like myself, I'm not a big breeder, but I'm responsible, that baby will be registered. And even if I couldn't have registered her, we still would have done everything in the world that we're supposed to. Halter breaker, give her manners, put ride time on her. Um, one thing I want to reiterate to you guys as a whole that follow me, if you own a horse and it is a problematic horse, please enlist help to start to fix the issue before you resell it. I see too many people haul their horses to the sell barn because they couldn't fix the problematic behavior. So they just want to sell it and get a new one. And the problem is, is that you're not doing that horse any favors because when a horse leaves you with problems, I understand you're frustrated and you're fed up and you don't want to keep dealing with them, but nobody else does either. And it's going to end up in the kill pen and probably with fixable issues. Um, there's lots of natural horsemanship clinics and things like that. If you don't feel comfortable, find somebody that maybe you can take it for a week. If you can't afford a month of training, there are guys that you can say, please, Please, I don't want to haul it to the cell barn with these problems. I just need a tune-up. I'm still going to take it to the cell barn because I know the horse maybe will come untuned. I don't trust it anymore. But the best thing you can do is take your horse and get a one-week tune-up before you haul it to the cell. Just so the next home that gets it can at least start with a horse that is trying not to be a problem. I can't tell you how many horses we get that set back. And we tie them to the tree with a lariat rope around their torso for a week every day. And they just stop setting back. And we've corrected the behavior. Now they can go on with their life. And when I sell them, I just tell people, hey, when I got it, it's set back. This is how we fixed the setting back. If you need help, call me. Most of them never do again. It takes them that long to learn they can't. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, they could have just as easily ended up going to slaughter over such problematic behavior if somebody wasn't willing to put the time into them. So we are just revamping. I'm trying to stay one he one step ahead, as I stated, where the market's headed. The kill horses are really, um, it's hard. It is so tough right now to make a living in the kill industry because the prices of horses are just too high. You just can't hardly do it. So... So, um, less and less horses are going to slaughter and it's not because people have drove the kill buyers out. It's just that the price, the price of the market doesn't constitute slaughter. Your average horse is worth more to just anybody than it is to kill. And until the kill plants want to come up in price and right now they're not because they're just patching the market with, with cattle. So they're killing more cattle, which is also fine. Um, Anything that we can do to improve the quality of the horses from here on out is is great. Now, is my husband dominantly buying horses for slaughter actively now? Um, no. <laughs> they cost too much to kill. With that being said, my husband actively has access every single week and is called and asked, please, do you have weight? So if I have horses that don't work, can I send them to slaughter in a heartbeat? In a heartbeat. So there's a balance there that we just need to keep good, viable horses in our program that we can do more with. And the horses that we can't, we need to go ahead and cut the loss and stop them from being a detriment to society. I don't want people to get hurt. I have had my stomach full of people getting hurt. So um, now people will say, oh, she, right there, she admits it. Look, look at the market. Like, do you? Anybody in America can look at the market and see that the inflation is across the board. Gas, food, the price of livestock, everything is, is up except for cattle. So it makes sense right now that, and the reason that there were so many horses being slaughtered during Obama's administration, more horses were being slaughtered than ever with Obama, because the price of cattle were so high, pairs were bringing 31 to $3,500 and people couldn't afford to slaughter cattle. 
You couldn't afford... Cattle prices were through the fucking roof. You couldn't afford to kill them. So they went back to killing more horses. So every president and every check and balance, there's just so much to it. Um, right now, less and less people can afford to breed. You know, so what you see is, is only the really high-end horses are breeding and only the very backyard horses are breeding. And it kind of knocks out that middle caliber horse and it sucks because those very low end backyard true backyard unregistered mare to unregistered stud they're just raising slaughter horses you're not you're not doing anybody any favors by raising unregistered horses of weird genetics like if you want to raise unregistered horses raise draft crosses they'll always have value if it's not a draft cross you might as well just like take money and it's life and throw it out the window going down the interstate D there's no no purpose in breeding unregistered horses because 99.9% .9 of people will not consider a grade colt. Now, once a horse is a finished horse, um, Dina, I don't have a clue. My, that would be a that would be a question for my husband, and I don't do his books, so I'm sorry I can't answer that. I just I might have bills. Um, let's see, Dominix. Nope, this is just the horses. I can tell you what the horses brought. But my husband bought several hundred head of cattle at that same sale, and I don't have the cattle bills. So the cattle bills go to his mom. I don't know. I'm sorry. I wish I could answer that. I can't. Um, what I can say, though, is is that there there is a market for grade broke horses, but most backyard breeders that are small breeding their grade mare to a grade stud, what ends up happening there, and this is the God's honest truth, they don't put the money into them to make them finished for them to have value because it still takes 15. It doesn't matter if your horse is a highbrow cat, Pepto Boone's Mall, Metallic Cat, Dash to Fame, First Down Dash, or your horse is a grade nothing. Colt breakers want the same amount of money. So when you're having to pay 12 to 1500, 10 months of training doesn't make a finished horse, it just makes a broke horse. And if you're twelve to fifteen thousand dollars into having a good foundation to be able to resell it, you're never going to get your money out of your backyard half Arabian. It's just the money's, it's not there. It's not ever going to make sense. So don't do it. It's it's never going to make sense. So please don't do it. Like please don't do it. Um, Colleen, I don't know. We break all of ours, and I'll tell you why I break all of my mares. Even Pixie, we went ahead and we've started her and we've started riding her. Because if I don't want to ride the mama, I won't want to ride the baby. So we make sure that our mares are, are trainable, soft, kind, good temperament. So we ride all of our mares. I mean, it doesn't matter if she's going to be... Pixie is a grade Frisian cross. We know she's a Frisian cross. You can look at her. She was sold to me as a half Frisian, half thoroughbred. But I'm going to breed her to a registered Frisian. Actually, this year she's bred to a registered knob strooper, but she will go be bred to my registered Frisian. Now, because of what she is and because I'm going to be responsible, that baby will always have value. The baby will, one, have papers. They'll be through a half registry. The baby will be halter broke, feet picked up, and more than likely we will have that baby broke and under saddle before I sell it. Um, I keep cult starters in house now, so I can afford to do that, but the average person can't. So I don't even recommend breeding a mare like Pixie if you aren't going to be able to foot the bill of the training. I have turned several people away that have called about her as a brood mare because, oh, they've always wanted to raise a blah, 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 blah. I bought one. Haley, he's here. I bought one. I bought a Percheron Frisian Cross, and he is a Grula. He's fantastic. He's just a yearling. But anyway, my, my point to what I'm trying to say, though, is that um, several people thought it would be so great. And then when we honest, they were like, well, I could just raise a colt a year and it would be a good, you know, investment. And I'm like, a grade mare is not an investment. A grade mare is not an investment. That is not an investment. He is a stud, Haley. A grade mare is not an investment. A grade mare is not an investment. A grade mare is a project that you like her, I like her, she's great, I'm gonna breed her. But, I have, and you can say, you're a fucking hypocrite, you just said people shouldn't breed their grade mares. I have a 
cult starting staff. So if I want to breed a grade mare and create a grade colt, and I want to foot the bill, I'm going to do it correctly. So I get to call the, I'm a pot that gets to call the kettle black because I'm going to breed my grade mare, but I have the means and the backing here to be able to do right by her and the foal. I've got the land to turn it out to raise it. I have a whole pasture of babies and we're going to get them good broke and we're going to get them well handled. You can see that my just turned two year old Frisians, they will be two in Cambria and Victoria. You can see that they look good. They're well managed. They meet you at the gate. They're socialized. They turn out with other horses. They stall well. Their halter broke. They're in your pocket. My babies are the same way. We have one right here. They lead. They pick their feet up. So as long as you're going to put all of the work in, now here's the deal. You can't stop there. So I don't have the ability to break all these babies. And I couldn't afford to send them off and have them broke. So I had to hire and revamp to have a cult starting program in-house. But I meditated on this for weeks. I mean, probably three weeks I meditated every day just trying to clear my soul and my mind and to find the path that God had for me. I know that God has me on this path, but where? what is this path evolving into? Where We are no longer on the everything's going to kill, save all the horses, oh my God. Now it's, hey, some horses are going to kill, let's collectively try to help them. But there's lots of great horses and I love it because I feel like it's going to give me more value and purpose and I'm getting to exercise the, the trainer in me and the knowledge that I spent my whole life to develop. For sure. For sure. So it takes a lot to, um, it takes a lot to make me in my core feel satisfied. I'm a very naturally pessimistic person, believe it or not. And it took me a long time to train my mind to see the positive. And I'm much better at it now than I was when I was younger. And one of my best things now is that I've been so optimistic and forcibly optimistic that I finally really, like I faked it till I made it. And um, my path right now is very satisfying with my soul. It is calling absolutely businesses evolve and having horses and being invited back. I sold a horse through Premier. Um, there were people who got on Floyd's videos and said terrible things that he had degenerative um, degenerative joints and fetlock issues. Do you know that he was vet checked by three different potential buyers and he passed his pre-purchase exam? So why are there people online that would do that? Are you just wanting to hurt me? Are you wanting to hurt Floyd? Or are you really so ignorant to think that you can diagnose a lameness or a defect from the computer? Like, are you that ignorant? So, um, what I do love though is that horse made it to his home. The customers were thrilled. They absolutely put um, in a recommendation that um, I was fantastic to do business with. The horse was amazing. He passed his vet check. And of course, we were asked to come right back and we brought Pepper and I think Pepper is even better. I think he's different, he's not a draft cross, he's registered. And please make sure you go to Premier Online Sales, Pepper's um, lot number nine. Um, Boo Ross, a friend of mine, um, and I had a conversation and she is a wonderful human and they went ahead and um, advertised one this month on there and theirs is a very high-end, five-figure, crazy expensive horse. And mine is a more of a run, like, working man's budget but but they sent hubbard horse transport and it was five thousand dollars down and twenty five hundred dollars upon arrival they spent more in transport than they did on the horse almost but floyd has a forever forever home and he's got grandkids and he gets to summer in minnesota and winter in arizona and uh it's fantastic so my heart feels this big Thor in Vegas, my heart's this big. Hammer in Yellowstone, my heart's this big. My buckskins are um, owned by an amazing guest ranch and they're gonna get to you know, take guests out on 
um, the trail pulling a wagon is just amazing. So it is fantastic that every single horse that we've sold through auction has just gotten an amazing home, better than I could have ever dreamed, um, short of it being one of you guys that I'm already friends with. So what I can tell you guys is, is that I love the evolution of where we're headed. But you know, I um, was very humbled the other day as I was kind of pouting about people attacking me. And there's a horse that brought half a million dollars recently. And the people that sold it do a great job. And they sell lots of six-figure horses. And they apparently have a little hate group too. And I guess their little hate group had gone on all of those big sell sites and posted where the man had been banned from the AQHA for drugging all of his horses and they were posting all of the articles and the wife got a six year ban. And I was shocked and appalled that people would do that to them. Like, so you did something wrong, you got banned from the AQHA and there are people out there that want you to suffer the rest of your life for your mistake. Do I think that that's sad that these people drugged horses got caught and are banned from the AQHA for a lifetime for one of them and six years for the other one I mean yeah I mean it like but these people have turned around and regrouped and found an amazing market for very high-end good horses and they're like but if they would drug those horses how do we know that they're not drugging the ones at auction and these people are just and you know what? In that moment, I realized there are people out there that will always hold your past against you. There are people out there that will always um, be jealous and be ugly. And at the end of the day, it made me realize that I'm selling just sell barn horses and being completely, completely honest that I don't have a fucking clue about their history. And these people are selling half a million dollar horses and are uh, getting the same exact kind of hate that I am by people that... To me, it just, seeing somebody else get the same kind of hate, like that very, um, nasty hate, I guess it just made me feel like I should not take it so personal. Like I need to just, like it just really... It, maybe it was just, I, you know, not to talk about them or to be, uh, but I'm just saying, like, it made me totally not alone. That it doesn't matter who you are, there are going to be opposition. There are going to be people that think that you don't deserve what you are working for and what you've earned. And there are going to be people that are going to hold your past or anything they can find against you just because they can. And that's a reflection of who they are. But I will tell you, it absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, like blew my mind that there were people doing that to them. Like, can you imagine? I mean, I'm sure it was gut-wrenching to be caught, to be embarrassed. I mean, all of that sucks. But then you live, you learn, and you build something even greater. Because that's what God does. God takes a sinner. If you read every book of the Bible, he took a sinner, a murderer, a thief, a liar, an adulterer, and he made stories out of their life of redemption. And my question is, why are people online so holier than thou that they don't see the beauty in my redemption? They don't see the, the beauty in those people's redemption. Why is it that we're so quick to hold somebody's sins against them, but we don't want to see what happened when the ashes were laid to rest and the seed was planted and now we have a beautiful something like those people got half a million dollars for a horse at public auction they got over a hundred thousand dollars for multiple others and they are working every single day to teach these horses to sit and lay down and do all of these great things and putting their knowledge and time into creating very valuable animals and they are Imagine the lives of these horses. They're going to people that are spending hundreds of thousands of dollars. You can imagine what the life of these horses is going to be like. And there are people that are angry about it. 
they're angry about it. They're just angry. They're angry at these people. Well, what did you want them to do? Go flip fucking burgers at McDonald's? Because I can tell you, I don't even know. I would accidentally, like, fucking kill somebody because I couldn't get the temperature in the burger right. So when you tell somebody, I don't like what you used to do. I don't like the kill horses. I think that you, okay, that's fine. But literally, this is all I know. I don't know how to do anything else but trade horses. This is all I know. So what I've done is try to evolve my business into something greater, better for the horses, better for my staff, better for me, better for my clientele. And what I have found is, is that I have rose from the ashes to try to make so much better of my future. And there are people that are so unhappy about that, that everything I do, they attack. But then I saw them do it to them. I saw them posting. There's articles all over the internet of them. You know, trainer gets banned for life. Trainer's wife gets caught administering drugs to, you know. I mean, it was horribly embarrassing, I'm sure. Horribly, horribly shameful. Like, I can imagine how they felt when all of their peers, you know, you know how people are. And um, I, Haley, I have no idea about branding. I literally couldn't sleep last night and I was playing on Canva. So maybe if you know anything about branding, help me. Um, I just like this color scheme of the red and the light gray and I just ran with it. Oh, it says 10 month subscriber anniversary, Haley. Haley, look, I was like, Haley, look, look, it says it. I love when it does those, I'm like, oh. Okay, so what I love is that I'm evolving. My program's evolving. And I just absolutely cannot take the haters forward. Um, and the reason I'm addressing it here is because there's always been a very big silence in the room about like, where have you been? You know, I've, I've received some really hateful messages um, from people that I had to ban and block that were my followers that said things like, I've subscribed to the Wild Tribe After Hours for a year and you've not been making content and you have just left us hanging. and. Um, that's not a fan of mine. That's, you know what, save your $240 a year and go somewhere else. I would rather not because I don't deserve to be shamed for taking a break to regather my thoughts and to better myself. And it doesn't matter if I needed one day or one year. Those of you who love me and stand behind me have always known that when I get quiet, I get quiet because God is working on me. And I am a very tough customer. I'm not the one that God's like, Tara, do this. And I'm like, okay, God, I've got it. I am like, fuck that. I'm not doing that. Like, I am a tough, thick, dense. Like, God God can't, like, give me subtle, like, hey. Like, I don't, I don't do subtle. Like, he has to slap me in the face, knock me on my ass, restaff my entire property, make my bills almost not make ends meet and like crush my soul and then I get it I get it we're going this way sorry you meant right right away like mm, mm. like I'm just telling you I am not it takes a month for God to set in what he's trying to do to me because I just can't fucking get it I am not a genius I am not a rocket scientist I am not spiritually inclined in that way I have some cool gifts spiritually. That's not one of them. There is no subtle nudge of, hey, Tara, we're, I don't fucking hear it. I, maybe I don't shut up long enough. That's what, I, I don't think I shut up long enough. So I have, when I know, when I start to sense that things around me are, the energy's changing, the people are changing, God has change coming. I have to get really quiet. I can't listen to the haters. I have to silence all of the noise and unfortunately not for 24 hours sometimes I have to silence it for a month I had to stay off the internet to the best of my ability for a month for my brain to be able to understand and feel God's work okay took a month a fucking month okay Somebody else would have gone to church on Sunday and by 5 o'clock that night been like, God wants this from me. We're building the ark. It took a fucking month, okay? It took a month of rain before I was ready to start building my ark, okay? It took a month of God just raining on my fucking ass before I was like, I think God wants me to build an ark. I was like up to here. I was like, hey, Jacob, this isn't working. <laughs> what do we do? 
And Jacob's like, the ark! And I'm like, oh, oh, an ark? Good idea! Like, no. Like, <laughs> if y'all only knew how truly... I'm dense. <laughs> It just takes me an entire month of the water rising. And I'm swimming. I'm, like, I'm selling recip mares so I can make it. And God's like, yeah, you can sell the recip mares. That's like the gravy. But can you work on the potatoes the gravy goes on? You know? And I'm like, oh, you want Thanksgiving dinner, not just gravy? Fuck. I don't have a turkey. Like, literally. Like, what I tell you. But Jacob dies, I can come up with the weirdest, like, so as I started telling Jacob, like, all of my dreams and my goals and where I'm headed, he just hugged me and he said, you're phenomenal. And I said, fucking stupid. And he said, phenomenal. <laughs> and Tylan said, you're phenomenal. And Jerry and Jay said, you're phenomenal. And I said, oh my God. Like, everybody in my life right now celebrates me. They celebrate me. And I don't, I don't, I can't be online. I can make my live videos and then I've got to go. And Heather's going to reply to your messages. And she's going to filter the comments because I can't hear the noise. Because I don't think I'm phenomenal. I know that there are days that I'm like, they're a fucking loser. But you know what? That is loser behavior. It's loser behavior to do to people what any of these people tried to do to the McKibbins, what they've tried to do to me, what they've tried to do to other people. It's loser behavior. It's loser behavior. And I am the kind of person that I have to fake it till I make it because I don't wake up feeling phenomenal. I wake up feeling like a failure. I wake up feeling like I fell the horses and I can't tell you how many times I started to not do something because I felt like I wasn't good enough. And it, even if I wanted it really bad, my haters were going to run it. I remember when I put Floyd online, I prayed. I thought, oh my God, please don't do this to him. He is so good. And when people left those weird comments about him having like dropped fetlocks or whatever, and that was not even remotely the truth. It was literally the biggest lie. The horse had passed a pre-purchase exam and the cell facility knew this. So they just deleted it because this horse has pre-purchase exams by different veterinarians. Not The same vet didn't do the pre-purchase exam. Um, and they were not my pre-purchase exams. So I don't have those two publicly put I didn't pay for them but I know that the horse went and he passed the pre-purchase exams twice and that those people bid on him and the reason Floyd didn't bring more money is because when Floyd got here 90 days prior he was just broke and he was green and had we had six months on him he brings 20,000 and the cell facility and several well the guy that bought him said he was prepared to give 15 for him he was stunned he stole him for 8,500 and the underbidder called me and said, hey, did you buy that horse back? We would like to make you an offer. And when I said, no, ma'am, I sold him, she started crying. And she said, I didn't think he met your reserve. There's no way. She said, I stopped bidding because I just thought he just wasn't meeting the reserve. And I said, no, ma'am, his reserve was 6500 And she just bawled on the phone. And she actually offered the people that bought him profit for him. And it was humbling. All of that was humbling. But... I was so worried for Floyd that people would just do to me what they did. So I went on the Gage podcast and it was phenomenal and it was so much fun and it was kind of something I really wanted and my haters attacked that podcast and attacked the comments and claimed that I had a hundred fake profiles and I had forced myself on their podcast. and. I'm going to tell you right now that it was the most devastating thing for me. I cried. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I bet I cried for two weeks. I have not even been able to listen to my own podcast because I just, every time I hear it, I want to throw up. Not because I did a bad job or that it's not, but it was something that meant so much to me and people completely robbed me of that. 
So if you go to the gauge here on Facebook, they have a clip of me saying like, I don't know how I got here because I didn't, I didn't think I would ever get invited. And so many of you requested me to be on there that they invited me because they had like hundreds of requests. And they bullied that podcast so badly. And the podcast didn't take it down. They were like, nope, we're not, like, we're not going to allow you guys to tell us what to do. But in the same breath, they also didn't take down any of the hate. And I'm telling you that that was one of the most gut-wrenching things. I was embarrassed. I was just mortified. And I have struggled since that day to even feel good about myself. And this is something I haven't said to you guys because I just hid. I just kind of like made content and stayed offline and it just got worse and worse. And I finally just had to get, I just had to, that was like the tipping point that like made me just, it hurt my feelings so bad. <laughs> uh, first world problems, right? Like people are dying and there's a war and you know, against Russia and Ukraine, and I'm over here crying because haters said mean things about me on a podcast. <laughs> like, first world problems, right? But I was so embarrassed. And I didn't deserve it. Like, I haven't done any of the things that those people accuse me of, and it's just so devastating to put so much effort into this and to pay for this property and to work so hard to do what I do and to have so much opposition because you have to remember that no matter how tough of my exterior, like I am a people pleaser. I am a people pleaser. I am a people pleaser from the old school, like where I just want people to like me. Please like me because I don't like myself. And so sometimes when people are like, you annoy me or your voice annoys me, I want to say like, oh God, I can't even listen to myself. Like if, if the, I mean, I annoy myself. <laughs> like, don't worry. I also don't like me. Like, don't, don't worry. I hate me too, but for different reasons. And you know, to be diagnosed with all of these online haters, I, they all the time are like, oh, she's such a narcissist. And I'm like, you don't, you don't know me. My therapist does. And I can assure you, I'm not a narcissist. And I'm not a shitty human, but I will tell you that I'm a shrewd business person because my husband is 10 times shrewder and I don't want waves in my relationship. So there's a lot of times that when the rules are the rules and somebody does something, I can't bend my buyer's guide because I'm not going to listen to my husband. I'm not going to listen to the things around me and I'm not going to not be able to, to pay my bills and support the people around me because you did not read the buyer's guide thoroughly or you felt like you were the exception not the rule like and I feel like those people are are idiots and then when I say those things I'm a terrible person so the, the thing Wendy is is it's very it's I know that you mean well when you say you shouldn't pay attention to these people um I don't know how to explain to you like how that feels for you to say that to me I know that you mean to be supportive but sometimes it's so important to know that like my pain and my trauma is valid for me. It might not be valid for you. It might not like, oh, just don't pay. Like coming from somebody who probably doesn't do any online and who doesn't um, have a huge staff that they have to make ends meet to pay and a daughter and all of the things that I have like the weight on my shoulders to support and all of the horses that need me every day you don't have all of that <laughs> and then let's not let's not talk about all the weight on my shoulders every single day let's also fast forward and talk about um, you don't have a group of people recruiting people to hate you actively on a daily basis and watching all of your live videos so that they can try to find anything they can in those live videos to um, turn and manipulate. You don't have that. And so while I appreciate you telling me to ignore it, I have been. I've had to. 
I've had to ignore it because I just couldn't mentally handle it anymore. And I'm a strong motherfucker. <laughs> so for me to tell you that it brought out the worst in me and made me hate myself, I can only imagine what it does to other people who don't have people telling them they're phenomenal because at the time I had a staff here that every single person was bleeding me emotionally dry on top of it and filling my cup up in no way and um I just wanted to quit I didn't want to work my ass off to support those people financially anymore because they didn't deserve it they were really not good for me and they were bleeding me emotionally dry all of them with their problems and so what I've hired now are people that don't have a lot of problems. They're just wanting to work and grow a business. And it's helped me tremendously. And every single staff has gotten better. It's gotten better. It's evolved. It's grown. But I'm telling you that the breaking point for me was when I went on the Gage podcast. And it was something that I wanted so badly. I feel like God used that as such an opportunity to humble me further that... I need to crave what he wants for me, you know? Like, I need to crave what he wants for me. And so when I got invited on there, I was like so excited because I just... That was like such a cool opportunity. Like it made me feel validated. Like finally after nine years of doing this, like somebody wanted to hear what I had to say. And that's all any of us want. Even the people in the groups that hate me, that's all they want is to be heard. The difference is they want to be heard in a manner of which the only way that they've found a voice is by tearing me apart. But I hate that for them because I actually have been to therapy enough to know that, like, they just want to be heard. They want to be heard. And they're so desperate to be heard that they're willing to ruin my life to be heard. They want to be so important somebody hears them. Me too. Me too. My staff, my horses, everybody watching this just wants to be heard. Like, they just want to feel like somebody likes them. Like, are you guys so fucking retarded? Honestly, that you don't realize that we're all the same. We're all the same. You can have a hundred thousand followers and make over a million dollars a year and still go to bed at night and cry because you hate yourself. Fucking humans. <laughs> fucking, hu fucking humans with first world problems. I mean, here we're having like World War Three fucking concentration camp style crazy shit in Ukraine and I'm crying because people are hurting me like I'm not naive or narcissistic or stupid I get it all the way across and I think it's loser behavior to use your voice to tear someone else down if you want to be heard you need to build a platform on your voice and what you stand for and if what you stand for is the demise of other humans because you don't agree with them, you're a problem. You're a problem. You're not. And the people that are in those groups, I despise my followers that are in that group or that are in those groups or even go there. And when somebody says, oh, well, I just want to see what they say. I block that person. I walk away from them and I want nothing to do with them ever again because you're the problem you're the problem you are the entertainment they're seeking you are the energy they're seeking you are the audience they're seeking so while you're my fan and you love me and you want to send me screenshots the fact that you saw those things to screenshot them means that you're the problem you are reading what they have to say you are helping their view count their algorithm and they feel like they are getting bigger and stronger and have all of these people they don't realize that 90 percent of those people are just gossipy nosy that actually follow and support me but also see what they say because it's drama 
and I've eliminated social media. I have eliminated social media from my life. I get on and I make content and then I walk away. Um, we have a group. If you're in the Wild Tribe after hours, you have an open invitation to the Wild Tribe Unleashed, which is a private chat. You can't get to the chat without paying for the group, and I'm so sorry. But if you pay the $20 a month to join the Wild Tribe after hours, um, or the $10, if you can only afford $10, you can join the Wild Tribe daily, which is on the Tara Michelle Sanders page. And you can get an invitation to our chat and I pop in and out of there and we talk about things and we do reprieves and we do all kinds of stuff and they get all the first-hand information and then the groups get it and then the page gets it. But I just don't do social media anymore. I don't do the comments. I don't do the messages. I see none of it. And it's taken a month of me stepping away from all of that to even have the want to be back on social media to create content for you guys. Because I was in such a not, and I'm telling you, it just started, like, that whole nonsense with the gauge just was the tipping point for God to break me open. It was such a blessing that it happened. I went on there. I was so excited. I was, oh my God. And then I was so embarrassed and so mortified that people hate me that would get... So if you go on the gauge, I'll just show you guys. If you're watching this, when we leave here, you can re-blow it up. Like, be my minions. They kept saying I was a cult leader with minions. And I will actually link it. If you haven't heard my podcast, I will link it today. I would love to link it today so you guys can hear it. Because I'm actually really proud of it. I'm really proud of it. I'm not only really proud of it. I thought I did a good job. I thought that I... Um, really killed it. So, um, it was me and then Jenna Smeek and then they had a couple of other people. And I will tell you that I absolutely thought it was one of the best, coolest, funnest things I ever did. And the amount of people that just tried to tear me apart were disgusting and some of them were people that I know and Jacob got on there and he tried to defend me so people like this were posting these articles like this is an article that says Thompson horse lot animal cruelty charges filed that um, that entire article is completely satire the Thompson, the, this Pegasus WordPress, I want you guys to remember that these like Pegasus WordPress, um, Horse Authority Co., these things are um, like freelance people that can just say whatever the fuck they want. And I, this was my response. I said, I chose not to partake in this because I just don't validate my self-worth on the opinions of strangers. But I do want to thank all of, I do want to thank you to all the amazing kind people who have messaged and tagged me with positive feedback. Thank you all for being you. And to anyone who is upset about the actions of a stranger, I can't relate. And the accusations on here are wild, but that's, social, that's what social media does. It allows people to have an opinion with little known facts. And that's okay. You are allowed to have an opinion and I am grateful for how many amazing people have messaged and tagged me and offered so much amazing feedback. And then people said things like, thank you for your efforts. I love the podcast. We love you. And there are so many people that spoke ki kindly, but I will tell you that um, it got so vicious that Ivy, Chance's sister, said, I'll jump on here and say that Chance had no idea who she was after she walked and still doesn't know who she is after she walked out the door. I still don't know who she is. So boycott if you want because people from the the group that hate group were threatening to boycott the podcast like they had ever even heard of it before my podcast. These are people that never listened to it before. So 
it's just really insane to see, like, they wanted to just spin their anti-kill pin narrative all over this. And, um, and the people on here, like, there are just people on here who absolutely just on and on. I mean, they just so desperately wanted to embarrass me or try to drag me for filth or, but at the end of the day, my podcast had more views than just about anybody else except for Clinton Anderson. The only person whose podcast has had more views than mine was Clinton Anderson. So, um, all of these have like around a thousand views, a thousand views. So we get to Clinton, he has 9,000. We get to Clinton, he has 50,000 because he was on twice. And then, so we get to this lady, she has like, you know, 2,000 views. Clinton has 8,000 views. This guy has a thousand views. Clinton has 13,000 views. Everybody else, they did like multiple clips, like boosting theirs, they did one. For me that was it because the drama was so bad that they didn't want to continue to boost it I got over 11,000 Facebook views and the podcast is actually on YouTube which I will share the YouTube link today on here as soon as this is over um, and when you type in the gauge podcast the number one search on YouTube is Tara Sanders so that was humbling It was humbling because I would have never thought that anybody would give two fucks what I had to say, but they did. And it was humbling. <laughs> and um, my podcast on there. So most people's have about on, on here have 600, 1,000, 8,000, 1,000. Um, Clinton Anderson had 30,000. This person has 900. This person has 900, 1,000. You jump to mine, I had 7,000 views. So, Del Brisby had 10,000. So, Del Brisby, we know he's extremely famous. So, it was humbling to see that that many people are, that you may not like me, but you're going to listen, you know? And I've had to, like, take a step back and tell myself, like, you can't handle the hate because you're a sensitive-ass bitch. You can't handle the hate because you secretly want people to like you. So what you need to do is to quiet the noise and just focus on what God has for you. And it's just finally happening. Um, I did the podcast. Um, they were supposed to give my podcast like a week and a half before it was out. But the one that Jenna did that was supposed to come out my week had um, vocal errors. So they had to put mine out instead. And... Um, yeah, it has 82 comments. But anyway, if you have time today and you want to listen to my podcast, it's on Spotify. It's on um, it's on Spotify. It's on everything else. But you can watch it. Like, you can actually watch me on YouTube. I'll share that right now. Because I think that some of you guys... probably haven't heard it and you might want to. So I'm going to just do a throw. I'm going to label it throwback to two months ago. Um, so that you guys can listen to it today if you want to. And what I would really love is for everybody that watches this and makes it this far in this episode of, you know, my YouTube to go back and leave a comment Just leave a comment on YouTube and you can go back to the one on Facebook and leave a comment. So that's the thing is that that for me was the moment that my life changed. That's when I went, you know what? I don't want to be live anymore on Facebook. I don't want a following. I don't, I, I want nothing to do with this. And then it took me time to go, but I, but I miss my friends. I miss the people who support me. The horses still need us. So I have had to revisit this and climb out of a very dark, ugly hole. Very dark, ugly hole to get back to where I am today, ready to go forward. 
So I appreciate, I really uh, appreciate it. I really do. And I hope that you guys will listen to the podcast. I hope that you guys will send them a message. Just send them a message or go like it or whatever. Oh, no. I really do. And I hope that you guys. Because I think that it was a shame that they were crucified and shamed by people who don't listen to their podcast anyway. But I'm back. And um, not only am I back, we're going to be back live almost every day. It just takes a minute for me to do okay. I actually, my eyeballs are throbbing right now. I think that I just um, have like a kind of a hormonal migraine, which they're the worst. And I've taken naproxen, so it's just isolated it to behind my eyes instead of a full-blown one. Uh, it's not a full-blown migraine. If it was, I would be in the bed throwing up. But I took naproxen as soon as I woke up this morning, and then I took two Midol when I got here. So I have a ton of painkillers on board, but I'm strong, but I have had to lay my life down a little bit and really meditate on what the future holds for us as far as the kill horses, the cattle, my staff, and we just completely regrouped. So I hope that you guys will continue to love and support me. I hope that you guys will please join the Wild Tribe After Hours. I really want to earn the full $20,000 bonus I need. I know that $20 a month, there's lots of people that are like, man, I really can't. And I'm like, I understand. I understand. But if you can spare it, do it. Because it does so much for the horses here. And I hope that you see that even though I've been silent for about two months, trying to pull myself out of a dark place back to sanity and love for the people around me and love for my lifestyle and love I hope that I hope that you guys see that the horses that you guys have paid to support are here we're still doing right by them like I didn't come back and go oh those horses are all gone so the money is being used in a great way please don't forget that pepper is lot number nine in the um premiere online sell this month please feel free to go like his post leave a nice comment he is such a nice horse 